I just came from a funeral and wanted to learn a little Torah in honor of two giant lights that I had the schluss, the merit of meeting in my lifetime. It was Joshua Kaufman and also Rav Shia Seidenfeld who passed away a couple of years ago. These were two bright lights who survived the Holocaust and they lived such incredible lives while they were here on this planet. And I thought I would do a little learning in their merit and raise their souls a little bit. At Joshua's funeral, they were saying how he lived every single day of his life, not complaining. In fact, the nurses said that even very close to when he passed away, he had a clean bill of health. He was always just completely astounding people with his strength and his ability to overcome things. And he always said that he never had a bad day in his life. Uh, I feel like Rev Shia would have said the same thing. Their children, Rabbi Seidenfeld, Shia's son, and his other children and grandchildren are great testaments of fanning that flame, as well as Joshua Kaufman's family, Alexandra and Rachel, and your sisters, and all the grandchildren, and how you spoke about him at the funeral was just beautiful. I think it was 2010, I was sitting and I was not feeling well. I had a bad cold. And you ever watch certain movies when you're not feeling well and then all of a sudden you feel better? So I was sitting watching the movie that I always watch when I feel sick, and that is The Karate Kid, the original, the first one. It is such an incredible movie and I watched it when I was a kid and feeling bullied by other kids, just like Daniel Sun, the main character. If you haven't seen the movie, please watch it. There's a lot of spoiler alerts here. I'm watching it and thinking, oh my goodness, Daniel Sun's character is so similar to Jacob in the Torah. And Johnny is so similar to Asav in the Torah. And I thought, I bet I could come up with a bunch of similarities between the two of these characters. And I taught a few days later at this Shavuos uh, all night learning through Vinay David, where I used to work. It got a pretty good resonance in the crowd. So I, I thought I'd share that with you now. You ready? If you look at the two characters, Daniel Sun and Jacob, and also Johnny from the movie, The Karate Kid, and Aesop, you're gonna see a lot of similarities. And I wonder if the writer, who happens to be Jewish, went to Hebrew school because maybe he had it somewhere deep inside. Or as the Kabbalists say, we all, no matter whether we're Jewish or whatever religion we are, we get this little thing right here above our lips because an angel comes into the womb when we're about to be born, teaches us the entire Torah, and then right before we leave says, shh, and then we get this little branding right here. Don't worry. You don't have to speak the words, they will all come to you. In other words, deep down inside of us, we all carry the Torah with us. And that's why when you hear a teaching that resonates, no matter what religion you're in, if it's in the Torah, it resonates because it's just a truth that you know deep down. And you go, I knew that, I learned that before, but I never went to a Jewish class, I never went to Hebrew school. It's like, oh no, it's because it's in there. Uh, Daniel Sun character is kind of meek and skinny. Just one of those people that feels like the world is kind of like, out to get him and so he goes and learns with this uh, teacher Mr. Miyagi and he goes to his farmhouse right in the middle of nowhere and he basically starts doing things around the house and so he's sanding the floor and he's painting the fence and he doesn't understand why he's doing it when Jacob was escaping his own brother Asa his mother Rebecca said go far away and you're gonna learn from your uncle my brother Levon. Now Levon was very different than Mr. Miyagi in the sense that he was kind of evil um, he had more evil traits than good we all have good and bad all of us. The story of the Karate Kid is all about that every single character has good and bad you know he's doing all this stuff and there's a part of him that's like why am I doing all this and there's a part where Daniel's like I painted your fence, I sanded your floor, what is this all for? And then that's when Mr. Miyagi stops and goes, Aye! and teaches him how painting the fence and sanding the floor, they all happen to be karate moves. And every time we feel like we're doing something that just feels so out of purpose, it still has a purpose. Even when we're out of alignment, it still has a purpose. And we will see, we will always come to know Joshua Kaufman would always say, there will be a time where you'll, where you'll see that everything has a purpose. It all made sense. And Jacob lived on the land of his uncle, Levon, for 20 something years. We have sand the floor, we have paint the fence. And again, he's thinking, what is this for? I don't even, 
I don't know what this is all gonna amount to, but eventually it, it did amount to greatness. He also was working on his balance the entire time that he was there. And eventually would learn how to do the, the famous crane kick at the end. And that only came from learning balance. In fact, there's a moment in time when they don't think he's gonna make it. And it's like really the dark night of the soul. He's laying on this table. He says to Mr. Miyagi, you gotta, you gotta heal me with your special Reiki powers. Right? Do that and then put it on his body and eventually everyone would feel better when he did that. And he said, I need, I need to win. And Mr. Miyagi said, no, Daniel. If I don't get out there, I'll never have balance. Not with those guys out there, not, not with Allie, not, not with me. You gotta help me, I gotta try one last time. In the middle of the fight, Johnny, who's very ruddy, right? He's got that pink skin, he angers easily, he's impatient, quick to blow a fuse, similar to Aesop, right? He is told by his pretty evil coach to sweep the leg. Why is this so important? Because Jacob gets hit by Asav and they're having their middle of the night uh, fight because eventually uh, Asav catches up with Jacob in the middle of the forest. And we're, the rabbis say they're not sure whether it was Asav because it's so dark outside. Jacob fighting his own inner demons or sometimes personified by something in the Torah. He's fighting him and he, what happens to Jacob? He gets hit in the sinew right here in the leg. Now, it's not exactly in the same place that Daniel's son gets hit in the leg. However, it is in the leg area. In the Jewish cuisine, you're not allowed to have filet mignon because it is the sinew of the, the cow. And we don't, we are very sensitive to that. We, we love this story so much about Jacob getting hit in the leg that we don't eat that part of the animal. He only has one shot left and that is to use his balance with so much force that he's able to kick where it counts at the end of the fight and with that one last sweeping kick this one crane move that it's not even shown if mr miyagi actually teaches it to him or if it's done through osmosis learning balance and so it's just interesting that that is the moment of truth where he has nothing left, very barely any strength left and on one leg just kicks and that's it. At the very end of the fight, Johnny comes over to Daniel and he hands him the trophy and he says, you're all right, LaRusso. Johnny gives Daniel a blessing, just like Asav, we think, gives Jacob the blessing when Jacob says at the end of the fight, I wrestled with you. Now I want something back, give me a blessing. Cause back in those days, that's how they won fights. They would give each other blessings. Can you imagine if we would be okay today, winning wars, winning fights, winning lawsuits by someone just giving you a blessing, forgetting the money, just vocally saying to you, you did a good job, you won the fight. What does Esau say to Jacob? He says, now, you will be called Yisrael because you struggled with God and you overcame it. And so now instead of being named Jacob, you're gonna be named Yisrael. The emblem, the logo of the Miyagi Dojo is a beautiful tree with the sun. We don't know if it's coming up or setting. And I remember the day before I gave this talk on, on all of these similarities, I was reading a Sefer, a book of Torah with my roommate at the time, Shella. I happened to see this beautiful teaching from Sefer HaChinuch, which is like basically a giant book that talks about every single mitzvah, every single halacha. And it said, out of the blue, we learn from the fight that Jacob had with Esau in the middle of the night, that the sun also will rise and the Messiah will come. So what does that mean? That means that while he was waking up from this horrific struggle, this entanglement in the middle of the night with some being, whether it was spiritual or physical, but reminded him of his brother, the sun started to come up and he saw the light. And one thing that happened at Joshua Coffin's funeral was so moving. It was a, a really dark day and it was a little cold in the air. And it's almost like God set the scene so we could have a 
pay our, our true respects. There were so many people at this funeral. We, we met at the Holocaust Museum here in LA and uh, his daughters got up and spoke so beautifully about him. And there was singing because he wanted singing at his funeral. He said, I want to have a party at my funeral. And so there, it was almost like a party. I mean, in the sense that everyone was crying, but they were so happy to celebrate the life of this giant. Everyone is just like, you couldn't, everyone was not talking, which is a big deal. And all of a sudden they say, you know, he would want us to sing. So we sang Ms. Lorna David. His son-in-law was leading on guitar. It was so packed in the building that we were pouring out of the sides and we were all on the mountain outside and everybody was just standing there and, and trying to sing. And at that moment that the guitar started to play, the sun came out and we felt the light and we could feel that he was there. And then the funeral procession came out and I saw a lot of my dear, dear friends who I've known for 20 years. And, you know, I said I was dreading this day when he would leave because he was such a light in the community, even if I hardly saw him. Whenever you'd see Joshua, that something inside of you would stand up a little straighter and smile a little bigger because I'm looking around at all these people and we're all sad and broken and I'm thinking there's there's some people in the world who have had it way harder than we have and they still find a way to smile they still find a way to spread light so I want to give us all a blessing that no matter how difficult our day is our month our year our life is we find something to smile about his daughter said that there was never a penny that he walked by on the ground that he didn't pick up and there wasn't ever a homeless person that he would walk by that he didn't give to. So may we all learn from that and try to be a little bit more like Joshua every day. And I want to dedicate this Torah learning to Joshua Ben Alexander. May his neshama have an aliyah. May he get upstairs safely. And also to Yeshayahu Ben Shlomo. May his neshama have an aliyah. Um, these are two pillars of our community, both here in LA and New York and overseas in Eastern Europe and in Israel. May their light and their music lift us all up. May we lift them up. May we continue living on their legacy of light and picking other people up.